Hallelujah. Well, God is good. And his mercy. You know, sometimes you just got to remind yourself of that. And like I said, I've, I had a, I've had a challenging week to say this week. And the day has been the most challenging to me. And, uh, but you know what? God's still sitting on the throne. And sometimes, you know, you have to make an effort to get here. And you have to make a conscious effort to get into the Holy Spirit. Even when things ain't looking good. And when you get a bad report. Has anybody ever gotten a bad report about anything before? <laughs> but you know what? God was showing me today, he was, he was reminding me, I, I knew this, but he, he reminded me that sometimes, you know, even when you struggle, things are happening. Amen. I said, even when you're struggling, things are happening. And he, and he brought my attention uh, a familiar story about the butterfly, the caterpillar and the butterfly. You know how the caterpillar walks, crawls around on the ground? But it instinctively knows that it's not going to stay on the ground. And then it goes into, it starts building this little cocoon. And I think it's called a chrysalis. Chrysalis, it starts to develop a chrysalis. And and, and that's amazing, isn't it? That's amazing, the transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly. But in that chrysalis, I think it hangs upside down, if I'm not mistaken. That would, be, that would be kind of tough, hanging upside down. I don't know how long it takes. I know it takes several days for that to happen. But when it's getting ready to break out of that chrysalis, the chrysalis starts to shake. The, 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 the caterpillar slash butterfly starts to struggle. And, and, and they say, and there's been documentation, scientists say, if you can't help that butterfly because when it struggles is when it's developing those wings. And they said that the fluid is being passed down to the wings to build strength for what's next. So when you're struggling, I want you to encourage you, you're building strength for what's coming. Amen. Amen. And God was reminding me of that today, and I just had a little happy moment. And so I, 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 I was reminded, you know, sometimes even pastors got to be reminded that it's, <laughs> that it's okay to struggle. You know, things happen when you struggle. But we're going to come out, that butterfly struggling. I mean, that caterpillar struggles. It starts to shake, and he gets that little hole, and he's, he's, he's fighting, getting out of that, the, the chrysalis. Metamorphosis is happening. That's right. Think about it. Metamorphosis is happening. And I want you to think about that. Next time something comes up and it's unexpected, or you, there's some of you here tonight that's going through some stuff, just, just say, thank God, metamorphosis is happening. Amen metamorphosis is happening in my life. I'm not staying here. I may be struggling, but I'm not staying here. Because when that butterfly breaks loose and when those wings dry out, it soars over any problems it had before. Amen? So I don't know what that's, who that was for tonight. I, well, I do know it was for me, but it might be somebody else for that tonight. So I just want to encourage you to you keep struggling, but don't, don't think struggling is a bad thing. Because something is happening. Amen. 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 Well, last couple of messages, I've been talking about your words are a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And I felt led to to continue on to that. I'm not going to review much because I want to get to a a certain spot. But if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to John 1. John 1, 1. I'm going to start right there. But uh, before we allow our words to be a demonstration of the Holy Spirit, we have to have those words engrafted and planted within us. And we've talked about that, you know, and, and uh, we, we did the, uh, the illustration of the bamboo, the Chinese bamboo, and how long it takes five years before you can see anything. But it, like Pastor Jason said, you've you got to water it. And if you don't water, it's going to kill the seed. So you have to keep energy going to that seed. And, uh, you know, in, in Mark chapter 4, it talks about how we've compared, God compares in a parallel, he compared that the word is to the kingdom of heaven as a seed is to a harvest. Now, the seed I'm referring to is different than what Pastor Jason was talking about a while ago. He was talking about 
a, a, a seed offering. Right. Well, kind of the same thing. He was talking about the word too, the seed word, but uh, I'm talking about the seed. I'm talking about the word seed, the, the scriptures of the word, okay? You got me? Okay, so let's move on. Anyway, it says here, all right, in the beginning was what? The word. And the word was? God. And the word? Was God. He was in the beginning with God. So the word was a he, is that right? Yes. Who is he? Jesus. Jesus. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So in the beginning was the word. Everybody said, well, the Bible wasn't in the beginning. Well, he's not talking about the Bible. He's talking about Jesus. So in, we can read it like this. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. You know the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we can prove that through, if you go to verse, uh, let's look at verse 14. And what it says here, it says, And the Word became what? The Word became flesh, or you can say, and Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, of course, you know the story. God, Adam and, you know, and Eve disobeyed, and Jesus had to send himself back basically to fix it, right? But I want you to see now, I'm not going to turn the scripture on everything. I'm going to try to remember. But you know, when, when uh, before Jesus was manifested in this earth, uh, he he sent his uh, he sent his angel Gabriel, and he went told Gabriel to go to Mary. Mary was the chosen one, right? Why was she chosen? She was a virgin. In other words, she was in right standing with the Father. So don't, don't, I don't want to bypass that nugget. I just want you to understand that's our responsibility. To gain favor from God, we have to be in right standing with the Father. Amen. So if you're struggling with some stuff that's, that's sin or things in your life you need to get rid of, get rid of it. Don't expect the favor of God to be all over you when you're dealing with stuff that you know you need to get rid of. Because the Bible says if you, you know what to do is right and don't do it, it's a sin. Okay, so let me get back to this. All right, so... So, so Mary was chosen. She had favor over God. She sent an angel, Gabriel, to tell her that the Lord is going to send his Holy Spirit to you, and you're going to give birth to a son, and it's going to be his name Jesus. She said, hold on, I, I've never been with anyone. I, I can't give birth to nobody. And that's when he said, well, the Holy Spirit is going to come and overshadow you. So he had explained to her what was going to happen, and she was already engaged to getting married. So he, this is a big, this is this is an important faith statement here. So once she figured out what he was talking about, of course, first number one, she had to believe it. But she not only believed it, what she said was, "Let it be done unto me." In other words, what she was saying was, everything that angel said. Is going to happen to me. In other words, she she said, "The promise that you just gave me, I'm going to receive it, and it's going to happen, and it's going to show up in my life." So what Mary did was, she not only received it, but of course, you know, she conceived it. The Holy Spirit came upon her. Now, how that happened, I don't know, but it, but she received it. So it couldn't have happened unless she received it. She couldn't conceive it until she received it. And and she received the promise. And then she conceived the promise. Now this, I'm going somewhere with this. See, and, and I've been this week, I had to repent. Because I was receiving and almost conceiving the wrong thing. I'm not perfect. I have news for you. But I was receiving the information that was coming to me. And I was getting dis- dis- aggravated. I was getting discouraged. I was getting down. Like, oh, you know, what? this is not even my fault. But they don't want to work with me. You know what I'm saying? How dare they be like this? How many have been there and done that? But see, we can't. What we got to do is make sure that we don't dwell 
on the issue. We don't receive. See, a lot of times we, we think we're doing right, but we're receiving and conceiving the wrong thing. In other words, we're receiving the, the problem. We're con not only receiving the problem, but we're conceiving the problem. That's one of the deceptions the enemy uses. So I'm spending time and energy, and of course my mind is racing on, on the things it shouldn't be on. And it's taking me away from what I should be doing. I, I, I'm not here by myself, am I? <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. But see, God, show me, you, 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 you're receiving the wrong thing. You're conceiving it. You, I understand you can get the information for it, but how we have control over well how we respond to that. And we have control over how much energy we put into the, the problem instead of dwelling on the answer. Now, that's easier said than done, right? So, so what Mary did, now, listen to me, Mary, Mary received, she conceived what the, what the angel told her was going to happen. And she received it, and she conceived it. And of course, that was the beginning stage of a seed being implanted into her. Right? Now, what I'm trying to make the parallel here is, is, is this. The way Mary handled her situation is the same way God wants us to handle our situation Amen. with the word. Amen. Now she handled, she had to handle the word first. <coughs> she had to believe that the word was spoken over her. She had to believe the promises of God that was going to happen. Well, let me tell you something. This is the promises of God right. is in this Bible. Amen. These are words, but until we receive it and conceive it, we're not going to produce a manifestation over it. Because like I said before, a, a sinner can read the Bible. An atheist can read the same word you read. But God said now, he compared how the kingdom of heaven works. Is the, the word is to the kingdom of heaven as a seed is to a harvest. Let me back up. Mary received it. She conceived the seed. And then there was a projection stage. There were some things that was happening that she couldn't see. Right? right? right. And that's where, that's where we kick in. That's where our faith has to kick in. Our faith has to kick in in that projection stage. Once we receive the word of God, we, we read the word that, that we need it to produce in our life. Greater seed is in us than he is in the world. Nothing is impossible with God. Um, for those that are in Christ Jesus, whatever word you're needing at the time... You may need a different word than I need. You know, there's, there's healing words, there's financial words, there's all kinds of, every area of your life, this is the answer to it. Yes. And like I said before, you, you, you can't get impatient with the word because God says the kingdom of heaven works as a seed is to a harvest. You can't show the seed Monday and harvest it Tuesday. Now, now, I'm not talking about miracles now. There are signs, wonders, and miracles that happen. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We understand the miracle power of God. You, you heard about a miracle Sunday, Skip and Carolyn, right? There's miracles that happen. But see, they had, they had, they had set themselves up for that. They were dedicated to the Word. They come to Victory Life Church. They, come, they were dedicated to, the, to, to, to reading the Word and, and operating in the Word. He, he didn't let fear get in the way of what he needed to do as a husband. So anyway, so where are we at? So when, when she received the Word, Mary received the Word, conceived the Word, then there's a projection stage where you can't see what's happening, but you know something's happening. So before you, before you give birth to your manifestation, you have to operate in faith. Because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please, the word, to please the Father, without faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You've heard it over and over again. All right, so let's move on. So that's when Jesus was manifested. He became a, he became a born again, I mean, he became a born human flesh a human just like we are. He came to the earth as a son of what? Man. 
He was a son of man, right? When he when he come on this earth. So the point I'm trying to make is, when she received the word, she conceived it and she believed it was going to happen, and it manifested itself in her life. That's why that's what I'm, the point I'm trying to get is we when we read the word of God, we read scripture, we have to receive it and conceive it. Just don't go by it. And just read it and think, oh, I'm, I'm reading it, but nothing's happening. Well, you just killed your seed. You have to read it, and you have to stand on it, and it's going to happen in your life. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So you speak over that seed. Pastor James talking about watering that seed. I believe you can water that seed. You speak over that seed. Yeah. You speak over it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? you gotta, you got to say some stuff, yeah. and you got to say the right stuff. Yes. Amen? Amen? Paul says, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but it was demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't even, I don't know if I got to this the other night, but we're going to, I don't think I went over this part, but I want to, this is very important. And we went over in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And it says right here in 1 Corinthians 14, 10 says that no word that you speak is without significance. In other words, your words count whether they're good or bad. Amen. They did an illustration, scientists did an illustration. Uh, I, don't, I think I, I showed it on the screen one time where they had these water, uh, these clear glasses of water, the same purified water, and they would speak negative over this water. They, just, they would foul language, negative speaking, just condensation. They would speak, and then they would speak life and, and uplifting, encouraging, edifying words over this other water, and you could see it. When they did it on a magnifying glass, it was completely different. The crystals were beautiful, and then it was distorted on the crystals that was that was as you spoke uh, negative stuff over. So what I'm trying to say is your words are important. I think we need to get back to understanding that that our words, how we speak, determines our success. Amen. So there's three things here. When we choose our words to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit, we should demonstrate these things. Three things here. Write them down or get the tape. Edify, identify, and multiply. When you speak, those three things should happen when you're speaking. Number one, edify. The word edify is used in the Bible to describe anything that builds up. As you and I absorb the Word of God, we are edified, our spiritual man is being built up and strengthened. Maybe what was broken down the road in the past, we, the word is rebuilding and the building process is edifying and we get edification through the word of God. Let's look at Ephesians 4.29 and uh, we're going to look at that through the, let's just put the regular translation, King James Version up there for me. I forgot to give my scriptures tonight. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let me go ahead and go to it in case they can't get it. Y'all holler at me when they get it up there. Ephesians 4, 29. It says this. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Let no corrupt word. I mean, did it say let some corrupt word or let more good words than bad words come out? It says let no corrupt word come out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. So if it wasn't important what we say, it wouldn't be in the Bible. Amen? Let's look at Romans chapter 14 verse 19. Romans chapter 14, verse 19 says, Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify one another. Let me read it again. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify one another. So we, we have a responsibility. You know, some things that you can say to somebody can change their whole demeanor. And on, the other, and on the other side of that coin is it doesn't take long to figure out where someone's at spiritually by talking to them. Amen? Amen. 
It don't take very long when you meet somebody. You can kind of tell where they're at spiritually. Because it's going to show up how? By the words they're saying. It's going to show up in their mouth. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another. So if you don't have something good to say about somebody, don't say nothing. I mean, you've heard that before, haven't you? So edification, we should, when we, as Christians, we need to make sure we edify one another. Number two, identification. Identification. A lot of times, bondage in life is often a result of the way human words identify a person and how that person reacted to them. That means don't, don't tell the kids, oh, you ain't going to never make nothing of yourself. Right. Or you're going to be like, just like your mother or your father or your grandmother or your grandfather. Don't speak negative words over your children. Amen. Don't speak negative words to anybody, Amen. but especially your children. Yes. See, I coached ball for quite a long time, from t-ball on up to uh, high school baseball or junior high baseball. And, and I, I can tell you, what the kids learn at this age, it's going to stick with them. It's going to stick with them. So it's important that you don't tell, don't kill a kid's dream. Because words can kill a kid's dream. Amen? Amen. Just like death and life are in the power of the tongue. Remember that illustration I used by natural power where a, a guy come up on the scene of an accident and they hit this power pole and the power was laying down? Amen? But... And the rescue people came out, and they was rescuing. They was getting people on the stretchers and all, and the power line was like three or four foot off the ground. But some people didn't realize that that power had 17,000 volts going through it. But see, that, that power was uh, the natural power. It was a natural law that was supposed to work for us. You know, it's the same power that, that, that runs your washing machine, your dryer, that cooks, you know, your stove. Those, the natural law works for you. But when you violate that natural law, it's going to work against you. So what happened was the rescue people got too close to that power line, and one guy touched it, and it was killed instantly because he violated the natural law that what the power was meant to be. Well, it's the same thing with the spiritual law. When you don't speak the right words over yourself, when you don't speak the right words over someone, you're violating the spiritual law just like that. Instead of it working for you, it's going to be a destruction to you. Because I believe that what you say is going to happen. I believe that what you say is going to happen. You don't believe me? Let's look at Mark eleven twenty three. I know you've heard the scripture over and over and over. Mark eleven twenty three. Somebody can quote it by heart. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believe those things he says will be done he will have what he says how many times is that one two three four four, five times it says you can have what you say and two or three times it says you can believe it so you have to say it more than you believe it according to the scripture but you have to keep yourself edified by saying it so your mountain that's talking about you know it, it ain't talking about a natural mountain, but it could be. If Jesus wanted to move a natural mountain, I'm sure he can remove, he created a universe. He can move a natural mountain. Amen. He said the works that he did, we can do also. Amen. But my faith ain't there yet. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> but you may have a mountain in your life that you can move with your mouth. Yes. Yes. There may be a mountain in your way that you need moving out of your life. Yes. You speak to it. Yes. You speak to that mountain. Amen. Identification. If the words said to you by a parent, sibling, teacher, or friend were positive and inspiring words, they may give you a sense of self-confidence. Anytime you speak life over someone, encourage them. I noticed when I was coaching, a lot of the kids you have to, when you encourage them, they want to do better. You know, when you get on them and yell at them and scream at them, they, 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 they cower down. You know? They cower down. But when you speak encouraging words over, they want to give you 100% effort. If your words aren't demonstrating the Holy Spirit and power of God, remember this. 
What is spoken becomes that. I like that. What is spoken becomes that. That's what we have to think in the back of our mind. That'll kind of keep you on the right track. What is spoken becomes that. Understanding how powerful your words are. I believe the words that we choose to speak are much more powerful than many of us realize. Amen. Amen. Especially this day and time, how the world is and with so much communication, Facebook, textbook, texting, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram. You can't, you can't say negative things over that either. It's the same thing. Some people think because they text it, they're not being negative. But it's negative if you're texting it. Amen? So we got to be careful. Let's look at Jeremiah 1, 5. Well, let me just say this. It says, before I formed you in this womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. That's identification. Understand where you come from. And understand, understand who put you here. You're not here by accident. Out of all the seeds God should have chose, he chose the one that you was in. You are here right now for a particular moment. You may not be Joel Osteen. You may not be Bishop T.D. Jakes. But where you're at, you're a platform. And I can tell you this. If you use one encouraging word to change one person's life, that's worth you being here. That's worth you being here. It's not about numbers. God didn't put everybody here to be Joel Osteen. He only put one Joel Osteen, one T.D. Jakes, and I'm not, a, I'm not saying anything good or bad about him. I'm just saying, you know my point. Yeah. Yeah. God put you here to be you. Right. He didn't put you here to be somebody else. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. We need carpenters and construction workers, and, and this young generation, I don't know what's going to happen, because none of them want to work now. <laughs> <laughs> me, and, me and Ross was talking about that today. Well, we, we rode by, we went to lunch together today. We rode by this, I think he said this guy. He said, I know that guy. He's got to be in the 60 years old. He's in there finishing concrete. I said, well, young people don't want to do it, you know. But you're here for you. God put you here to be you. He didn't put you here to be somebody else. Amen. So don't let the devil or the enemy think you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. Because I believe if wherever you're at, you're doing the right thing. Yes. You're, you're, you're showing up for work on time. You, you're, 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 using, you're having a great attitude. Yes, yes. And you're not missing any work time, and, 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 you, and you're happy doing it, being the hardest worker there. Amen. God's going to elevate you. Yes. You'll get promoted. Amen. God, it's going to happen. Amen. I said it's going to happen. Yes. Now, don't call in sick every other week, and then won't know how come you, <laughs> you, you, you're not getting promoted. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Pastor Jason, he manages a, 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 he, he's a, a, he's a supervisor. So he's the next in line at the, uh, right up under the bosses up there in his company. So he deals with people all the time. He hires people. He fires people. He, he ain't going to hire you if he looks at you and says, you don't come to work but once or twice a week. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he wants dedicated people. People want people committed, working, and Christians should be the most dedicated people out there. Yeah. If you have to, if you have to take a, a job that that's under that you're underqualified for, that, just look at it. And say, hey, this is just temporary. Something better coming my way. Yeah. If you got to flip hamburgers, you'd be the best flipper you could be. You can start fl start flipping with both hands, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. I'm, hey, that's what basketball people do. They dribble back, then dribble left hand. They can dribble right hand, left hand. You can get better wherever you're at. I don't know who that was for. That wasn't even in my notes. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. All right, last thing, multiplication. This is number three. Identification, I mean edification, identification, and multiplication. This is what the Word says. God, remember God said, be created every, when he created every living creature and said, be fruitful and what? Multiply. Multiply. God has endowed us with the power to give life by two means. Listen to this. Biologically, you know how life becomes biologically, right? We're all adults in here. <laughs> you know how life becomes biologically and verbally. We understand the power of our reproduction capacity to bring forth life. 
but we are also called to be accountable for the power of our words to produce life or death. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Let's look at uh, Colossians 1, verse 10. God created every living thing to multiply. Every living thing to multiply. He created every seed to multiply, to produce after itself. Do you know your, your, your words can produce after itself? It's the same thing, right? Same principle. That's what we're talking about. Your words can produce after itself. Well, that's good right there. Where am I at? Colossians 1.10. We got it up there? That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully, and didn't say halfway pleasing him, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Being fruitful. So wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, be fruitful. Amen. Amen. Allow, to run, allow the word of God to run to you, but also allow the word of God to run through you. I believe that's why you're here. Like I said before, you can you can touch people I can't touch. You you got a different arena, folks. You hang out with. You got a different job place. You hang out with. There's people you can you can just be a, a witness to. You can be a light. God says to be a light into the world, and we are a light into the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 26. I mean Matthew 12, 36, 36 says, "But I say to you." This is good. That for every idle word men may speak. You know what idle word is, right? Yes. Idle word men may speak. They will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. That means somebody's recording you. Right. Somebody say, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, Father. But every word is going to be justified. So that shows you right there the importance of the words that's coming out of our mouth. Amen? Let me finish with this. God's word that is conceived in your heart. We talked about this from the beginning. The word of God that is conceived in your heart, then formed by the tongue and spoken out of your mouth, becomes a spiritual force releasing the ability of God that's already planted within you. Let me say that again. God's word that is not only received but conceived in your heart, then formed by your tongue, by what you say, and spoken out of your mouth, becomes a spiritual force releasing the ability of God within you. It, it releases the ability of God in you. Now, you have to have a, con that's got to be a conscious effort to understand that. That's a spiritual force that belongs to us. Amen? So when you see stuff happening, that you, you don't get caught up in why did this happen and why did that not happen. I've told you before, there's going to be things in this world that happens you're not going to be able to figure out why. Amen. And I say that to encourage your faith, not to diminish your faith. Amen. Amen.